Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to this episode. In this episode, I chat briefly about our amazing subscription service, Content Club. And just before this podcast starts, I wanted to let you know that we have now got a Black Friday deal going on for Content Club. So you can get it for £10.36 per month. So that's a tenner a month instead of the original twelve ninety five. You need to use the code Black Friday. Um to get it at that price and you can purchase it now by the link in the show notes enjoy this episode Welcome back to the Web Pro Podcast. I hope you are all very well today. Today you are um, just be listening to me, Roxy. Nevertheless, I'm going to be bringing you the goods today. Don't worry about that. Today our guest is Zoe Brin, and she is a I hope I say this right. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Conscious leadership consultant. Is that right, Zoe? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. So first off, thank you for being here. Um, Great to have you here um, on this rainy day that we are experiencing. Tell us all a little bit about what you do and how you got into what you do. Oh, well, it's lovely to be here, Roxy. Thank you. Um, Yeah, so I'm a conscious leadership consultant. And um, so my background is in uh, senior leadership within um, schools, within education. So I used to help run uh, schools. Um, before I decided to uh, kind of go it alone. So I started off on my own, helping others, helping other um, business owners to lead their business, to uh, become the leader of their own business and to expand and to make bring things forward. Um, And also to help look after their staff, look after the people that they work with on a day to day basis um and then I I grew myself so I grew my own team I started um looking at in more depth how we can be more conscious of how we treat people so one of my passions is um looking after society and looking after the planet so um I'm not too much of a hippie but I I I like um I like looking into sustainability within with regards to society and the planet and so um as part of that I decided to set up conscious leaders and it really kind of helps people who run their own businesses to look after their team and by doing so and by being conscious of their team they then are able to grow because that team wants what they want they're on the same mission they're really with them they're not just turning up and doing their hours and going home so it's really kind of what I wanted for businesses but also what I wanted for the the people that they might employ or use as freelancers because I think it's really important that people especially nowadays are happy in the jobs that they do and the the environment that they work in so that's why I set up um the business I have and yeah I love everything about it oh that's so people that are listening right now um you you know I want to touch upon you know you said how to be a leader in your own business so for all of us in the creative industry we kind of fall in love for something creative and then start a business and you may not have that kind of or even know or had experience in that leadership kind of role that how do you even begin to start to become a leader in your own business yeah it's true that there is a real disconnect in lots of businesses yeah and also in the wedding industry there's lots of disconnect between um wanting kind of being passionate about what you do and wanting to do that kind of almost range of tasks and then becoming a leader um of it and there isn't there isn't a huge amount of difference. And although I work both with males and females, um, I find that especially in the female um, or more more female orientated businesses, we find it really difficult to see ourselves as a leader. And we kind of say, yeah, but I'm only a cake maker. I'm only a, I'm just to this, I'm only a that. When actually, no, I am a business owner. It took me a while to like feel comfortable in that, 
in saying that to people and how strange is that it is it is strange but it's so common it's so common it's it's very um it's very very common to have that um almost limiting belief and even though I don't directly work with limiting beliefs it is a limiting belief that you are just a um so um lots of women wear many hats and they think well I'm just a mother or wife or, you know and you've got this great big pile of stuff that you're just a and that's not true you're a leader of your life and part of that is if you're in business leading your business is first identifying and accepting that you are actually in control of that business and you make the decisions on how to grow how to move forward what direction to take and to do that consciously um, isn't just a case of being confident in what you do but kind of looking at your business almost from outside of it so having someone who is able to show you your business as a whole and find those gaps and plug the gaps from an outside perspective will, will kind of help you help to elevate you into being the leader of your business and making those really kind of confident driven decisions and sometimes risky decisions that you that you feel that you might not put yourself out for I hear all the time oh yeah I'm not a leader I just have a VA and someone to do my social media oh and I've got someone who does my website and you know you, they don't realize that actually they've got three or four freelancers that who work with them or I, I've just got a Saturday girl <laughs> who comes in and helps up when it's busy you know but actually you are a leader you um you have that position and it's it it just takes a little bit of tweaking and convincing to make you to put you into that position so that you are more more able then to grow your team and to grow your business and to take it in the direction you want to do yeah I mean for me as I was saying before I always felt like a fraud for a little while like if I do it long enough I'm gonna believe it do it for long enough I'm gonna believe it but I I had to kind of nudge myself keep nudging myself forward and then eventually I was like okay I can I can hold my head high and say I am a leader in my business. Obviously, there's Katie as well. Kind of, we are joint leaders in what we do. Like you were saying, the fact that we have a VA and that um, you know we might outsource some parts of our business, we orchestrate that. Like we are in charge yeah. of what happens. To you know, we have to make the decisions, set the rules, set the boundaries to all people that have dealings with our business. So, I am a leader, and I quite like saying that now. And I think that that's taken some some time and I don't know if anyone listening can probably relate to that feeling a little bit like for like oh did I yes yeah. just, just me it's just little old me yeah exactly and and I think that you know I think a lot of people have kind of or a lot of businesses especially online businesses nowadays have have looked at that kind of um what do they call it imposter syndrome oh yeah and, but actually they get over that imposter syndrome and think okay I am that handle maker or that that cake maker or that uh, wedding organizer etc but actually what they really need to do is say actually I've really got hold of my business it's not just a case of me believing in what I do anymore but it's a case of me believing that I can do much more than I am doing now if I put the right things in place and that is me moving my business forward and therefore I really am the leader of my business <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's exactly what we are going to talk about today. What what kind of things that you guys at home can do to take the steps to maybe think, okay, if I want to get to where I want to be, maybe I've got to look at scale of my business and how how you go about kind of setting those cogs into motion. Um, so yeah, let's let's explore this topic. I'm I, I'm very excited because I've never really spoken to any, anybody who is a conscious leadership consultant, which is it's an amazing title like it's, 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 um, so I'm going to be listening as much as I am talking to <laughs> so those people that are listening that have never thought about um if they need to scale the business what like how do people know like what do you know what I mean like what's going to be going on for them 
well, or... yeah, for, I mean, first of all, the first the first thing that you're probably going to notice is that you don't feel you've got enough hours in the day. And I know we can all say that, but when you really, yeah, exactly. So when you really, um, when you really know that actually your business, the stuff that you're doing in work is taking up more hours than you want it to or than you have. So it might be that you can't get everything done in one day and you've got a, a list of five things instead of three. It, you know, it might be that you are not able to keep up with the demand that your business is putting on you. Or it might be that you feel that if you had a bit more time, you'd be able to then put in the next step. You'd be able to then grow your business, you'd be able to go out and, and network. You'd be able to look for... Um, the, the right support for you to make sure that you're growing and you're moving on. So it really is very specific to the people who, um, to, to, to each individual business. Um, however, some of the common things that you'll feel is things like overwhelm, um, not giving yourself wellness time, not enjoying your life as much as you might have before, um, cutting corners, doing things um, quickly, or one of the biggest things that I see is grabbing help um, quite randomly. So things like, I need a, I, I know I need someone to look after my admin, therefore I'm going to ask, and I'm going to use funny names now because so that I don't offend anyone. <laughs> I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Beryl um, how Bob is doing in his in in his VA role and Bob's a great VA and so I'm gonna ask Bob has he got time for me too yeah. and Bob comes onto my team and then because I've just grasped at Beryl's VA because I don't really haven't got really got the time to look Bob isn't great and might be fab fabulous for Beryl but it's because he's really really interested in Beryl's um uh, business yeah and I'm not talking about just someone who fits maybe the wedding business. I'm talking about someone who fits your specific business, your values, your mission, your yeah. growth strategy. All those things are really specific to your business. And for us to grab at people um, just because we haven't got time to look for them in the long run will, will cost us even more time because they, it's going to be counterproductive. You're going to come across difficulties. You're going to have to spend more time with Bob. <laughs> yeah. And, than you, than you want and we've had an experience with this. Potentially not just have to spend more time with Bob, but then you're going to have to go back and redo things that Bob has done. Yes, exactly. Like what you wanted, or it's just not, it's just not, just not clicking. And that, that is so true. I've had experience with that before um, in the past in the bridal shop. So important. You are only as good as your team, aren't you, at the end of the day? Exactly. And you need to be looking for specialists who really kind of believe in what you're doing, who've got the same kind of outlook, ethos, who um, who are right for you. And that might it might be Bob, <laughs> but it, I wouldn't leave it to chance. I would um, make sure that you, you're looking for the right people in the first place. And so those things, if they're coming up for you, if they're coming, if you're feeling like Bob's not working <laughs> within your team or you feel like you're constantly looking for someone to help you, but you can't find them or you're feeling overwhelmed or you're not looking after yourself, all those things. It might mean that your business is in that, uh, is, is at a point where it's about to grow to the next stage and you need much more specific help in order to help that to grow. Um, and the good thing about getting this bit right and putting it a little bit more time into this and effort into this is that you can reuse it. So you might have to put in time now, but you won't have to put in so much time next time you're growing. Um, and also you will get the specialists who will help you to, in that growth. They're not just going to be saying, yeah, OK, you've given me this task. I'm going to do the task. They will be right. You've given me this task. How can I best do this task in order to make sure that we're we're growing and that it's getting the right audience, getting to the right audience or whatever that task might be? So it's really, really important to um, to identify, first of all, within yourself and within your business, 
where that support is needed so that you can get the right people. And I think I think this is um, one of the biggest kind of after starting your business and going it solo for a while, this is probably like the next like biggest step that you're going to take in your business is like scaling it up, maybe getting some staff, outsourcing. But um, and I've been there with this one as well. Like I know I want to reach this goal, but how, like financially. I'm worried to, you know, spend money on this, spend money on that and it not be right. So like, how, what, what do we do with those kinds of thoughts? So again, you get a lot of people who will say, right, I need, I'm going to take the example of a VA, but it could be anyone. Yeah. So I need, um, I need a VA and I know that VAs cost anything between 15 and 40 quid an hour. So because I haven't got a lot of money, I want one for 15. And then they go out and look for someone for 15 pounds an hour. Whereas if you're at a stage of growth um, and you want to make sure that you are consciously looking after the people that are within your business and you want to make sure that they're always on board and that they stay for a long time, what you need to do is think about it slightly differently. So if you have a look at the amount that you have, so you set yourself a budget and you say, I have, um, I can put aside 500 pounds a month. I'm just pulling out a figure but let's say I can put aside 500 pounds a month um for uh, a VA and um it may or may not cost me that amount but because I've put that aside what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go and look for that for that VA because I know I can get one I don't know who it is yet and once you've done once you've gone through some really conscious steps and got to the point where you are interviewing those VAs and they come back to you because they're most of them are freelancers and say, oh, my rate is 15, 20, 25. So and you might then say, you know what? I've got 10 really good people that I've interviewed. I think three of them aren't really right for me. So I'm going to take those off. And those seven others, I'm not going to I'm not going to just go for the cheapest and get lots of hours out of her. Actually, there are two that really, really stood out for me. They they they're, they're very different to each other but they're really on my um, wavelength and I really want to work with them. And one of them costs 20 pounds an hour and the other one costs 30 pounds an hour. So if I look at my budget, how if they're both right for my business and I can see that they've both got potential to help me grow and to bring more money in, how can I offer them the hours within my budget in order to start? So, I might say, okay, I can only I can only um, have Jill for eight hours a month, um, and I can only have um, Jim for five hours a month, let's say, and that fits my budget because one of them costs more than the other, let's say, right? So you've then got an idea of how those people, the people that you picked not just the cheapest for lots of hours, but you know that they are specialists and they're really going to help you. They could probably do within an hour what the cheaper person or the one that's not as specific for your business could do in two or three. So you're really kind of maximizing, really being conscious of how you're spending that money and how that return on investment will look for you. Because the more specific they are and the happier they are, and the more on board they are with your mission, the more likely they are to be able to do things at a reasonable pace, at a good level, and be able to help you then to free up your time for you to go and do something else or for you to grow to your uh, your, your business in whatever way you want to. So really, the money aspect isn't a case of can I scrape together, you know, so much an hour or a week or a month. It's what is my budget and what specialists can I get to even start before I then can give them some more hours or offer them some more hours or and grow in that way so that they're being really it's it's a really productive and um happy experience for all of you yeah so they're working for someone that they really believe in you're working for some you're you've got someone working towards your mission and you're both making progress. So, you know, that's what it's about to start with. And then you then you grow from there, really. 
And when it's done right, like you were saying, it's such a nice feeling. Like, like everything's clicking, it's great. But when it's <laughs> not so right and it's not been planned out and thought out in the ways that you just spoke about, it can be quite stressful. So don't do it the wrong way around, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had people come to me and say, right, okay, I can, I've can. i heard that you can get VAs for X amount of money. So but where do I find those? I'm kind of like, I, I don't, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, um, it, being, being conscious within your business isn't just about um, being conscious of how, of your actions for your business. Is that about being conscious of your, of how your actions affect the people within your business as well? How does it affect your clients if you've got someone in in role that isn't really up to scratch that you're constantly nagging is taking up lots of time? How does it affect the other team members if you've got someone who isn't delivering um, or isn't able to 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 meet? The, your expectations so getting the right person even if it means that you get them for less time to begin with is really really vital yeah um i really that's that's a really 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 good point um one thing that i have previously struggled with when it comes to um like outsourcing or getting outside help from the business is letting go of that control <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there was a tipping point where okay okay i can physically not do this end like I've got no more time in the day that feeling that sense of overwhelm I hate it so now I'll do anything not to feel overwhelmed but oh my gosh letting go of control <laughs> I'm going to be nodding along to this like this is my business I like, grew this baby yes so, yeah like let's explore that there are there are a few things here if you got if you do these first steps and you get someone who is really interested in what you're doing and believes in what you're doing and you build that trust and that relationship with them then you are one you're going to be happier for them to take on stuff that you will need to trust them with and um two they will feel kind of all but well they feel motivated by the fact that you trust them with your with your baby yeah with just with the stuff that you you really hold dear um but also to remember is that you don't have to run your biz business in any other way than the way that you see fit so if for example and i have had um people i've worked with where this has happened they've loved what they've started to do and as they've grown they've realized they've passed on the stuff they love and now they're doing the stuff that they don't really love. And there's nothing to say that they have to do that. So if if what you if you if what you love is decorating cake or planning the, the your your cake, for example, um, just because it might be the first or it might be one of the earliest steps doesn't mean that you could you have to pass that on. It it means that you can keep the stuff you love and pass on the stuff that you don't. And pass it on to someone who does love it. <laughs> who, it. Really, people, who really loves. people out there, guys, that love admin, right? There are. There are. You wouldn't believe there are people who love organizing stuff, who love sorting emails, who love, you know, um, who love designing graphics for things. Um, and so yeah, so there's no there's nothing to say that you don't you can't you don't have to uh, pass on the stuff that you love even just because you think well that's the simpler stuff for me. Um I've got a couple of people I work with who don't actually even though they are the leader of their business and they are um happy being the leader of their business, they don't actually do want to do the management of the of their team. So they've actually outsourced someone to manage their team. And because when they first started their business, that wasn't part of their plan. That's not something they expected to do. So it really is. It depends. You don't have to become that traditional leader of, well, I'll end up managing a team that does all the stuff I used to. You can sit within your business as the specialist you are, wherever you want to be, and have other people around you to do the, to do the other, other jobs. Yeah. When we started um, this business, the wedding business of like previous this, we had the bridal shop. And as soon as me and Katie were like, okay, we want to start this new business, um, immediately both of us were like, right, we are getting an accountant. Like this, this yes. is a, 
we aren't even going to discuss this. Like the funds will be there immediately. It probably means we get paid a bit less, but we we don't touch the accountant stuff. It doesn't interest us. We would rather be doing the stuff we love, like coaching clients or creating content or um, like creating an online courses or like whatever it is. But we were like, no, we don't want to do that. So, and you know what? I love, I love that all we have to do is just like submit this bit here, do that bit there. And the accountant takes rest, like takes control of the rest of it. Happy for that to happen. And yeah, that's, and, 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 and for nearly three years and we have a really good relationship. And that's one of the things that if it's done well, massive like stress off my shoulders. Funny because I, I am exactly the same. So I'm an ex English teacher. I started out as an English teacher. So don't mind the chatting, don't mind the talk, don't mind the writing, don't mind the copy and all the things that some people really don't like, but I can't be doing numbers. I can't and just not can't can't be doing numbers. So that's the, one of the first things I, I outsourced. I needed a bookkeeper, I needed an accountant, I needed a, anything that had to do with numbers because it's just not something that I love. It's not something I'm good at. It's not something I'm interested in. In I just kind of say, tell me what it is that I need to do, and I'll give it to you. And and that so so I I'm, I'm I'm the same thing. And it is so much better because I don't have to stress about that those things, and I don't have to ignore them, which is what I was doing. I was kind of like going, yeah, just pretend that's not happening. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I don't know about you, um, but when. I feel like, oh, like, yes, I don't have to worry about that. That enables me to, you know, give me brain space and it makes me excel in my business mm. almost because I haven't got to think about the stuff that I don't want to think about and I've put myself where I want to be and it, it kind of opens my mind and it kind of frees it almost. That, okay, like, the possibilities are now endless because <laughs> that's sorted out, that is sorted out. But, yeah, letting go of that control, back to that, that's kind of... Um, it is a learning process, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Absolutely. Overnight. No, it doesn't. No. You still forward with that one. Yeah, it's it it is. And sometimes it's about so yeah, so the other thing I was gonna say actually, you've just reminded me. Um sometimes it's about having someone to point that out to you. So I've got a client that I'm working with currently, and um uh she said to me only yesterday, Well, what about if I do this and then I do that? And I said, Are you trying to reduce the work that you're doing or you're trying to increase the work that you're doing she said reduce and I said well in which case you just need to let that go and she found that really quite difficult and I was kind of like so do you trust this person to do this job yeah have they shown that they can do the job before now yes yeah. it, then it's you you need to let go because everything else is in place <laughs> and sometimes you just need someone to tell you okay it's time to let go of that now and you need to Pass yeah. it on. You've just kind of got, let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's already raining. It's already raining. <laughs> um, so, I mean, how can people start letting go and outsourcing? Is it a good idea to just jump in feet first? Or would you say, okay, let's look at what systems we can put in place in your business? Or, you know, uh, instead of it being a person to start with <laughs> that you're outsourcing to, can you just set up some? like can you uh, sign up to get things done like, on an automation service really again really personal to your to your business and what you want to do and what how much you want to outsource and, and what kind of budget you have however I will I always start with even if we don't end up using it I always start with the stuff that you love and the stuff that you're great at you keep and then you start to then you tell yourself, well, what's the stuff that I'm good at and that I like? And then you put that in one one bundle and then you say, what's the stuff that I'm really not I really don't like and I'm really not very good at? And these things might be different to each other. But then you put those in one bundle and you kind of have a person or two people for each of those parts. And obviously the one the stuff that you love and the stuff that you are great at is you. You keep that. Yeah. That's the stuff you keep doing. And then you look at the other two areas and you say to yourself, is that is that one person? Is it two people? Is it five people? Who You know, how many, if I've got bookkeeping and social media in both of those parts, it's unlikely it's going to be one person. Yeah. So um, 
So you look at those and you decide what is it that really will make a difference to me right now. And then once you've decided what's what um, uh, skills or what tasks need doing and you've put those as a little package, you kind of then say, who is this person? So who is this person that can do? Now, for me, when I did my first one, it was it was all around numbers. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, it was it was an accountant. But well, in fact, it was a bookkeeper at first. So who is this person? Do they already have a label? Um, do they already exist or do I need to find someone like a, a virtual assistant who can do some these tasks? And then once you've got your um, once you've got that idea, you can kind of create an ideal hire. So, you know, like how we have ideal clients. Yeah. yeah? You do the, exactly the same, but with your ideal hire. So you you think about that person. Who are they? do they do they have to live in the vicinity do they have to be close to you have you got a physical shop yeah so who are they where 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 do they live what what platforms are they on online um what do what do they currently do for a living if it's not if it's not someone full-time if it's a freelancer is it something you know so you make up almost an avatar of a perfect hire and then you go and outsource you you find that person so it's as we were said at the beginning it's not always the best idea to say has anyone you know it's good to get recommendations yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. me wrong but not kind of like does anyone know bob yeah um we w- what you need to do then is you need to go and put something out there about you and say this is what i do this is my passion this is my business this is where i want to go with it this is how i'm growing and i need someone to do these things and you tell them what that little package was that you came up with and say you know these are the things and get them to apply get them to get hold of you get them to yeah and then once you've done that you then go through the process as you can imagine you kind of shortlist you interview and then you 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 hire an onboard so um so yeah so I would say your first if you're thinking you're overwhelmed you you've got too much on you need someone I would really look at the things you love, the things you like and the things you really don't like and see who that person is, who that first person is. Yeah, it's like um, compartmentalising kind of your, um, your, I've lost my words, your business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this rain around me, obviously you guys at home can't hear, but I have like a, a shed office, what I call it, and it's so, oh, like, the rain is so heavy, and I'm like, gosh, it's, <laughs> it's really, really off-putting, it's really off-putting. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this word, um, consciously, and um, oh, yeah. what that might mean, or what that doesn't mean, to, like, it means to different things to different people, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think everyone believes that they're kind, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I think I'm kind. You probably think you're kind. I think most people think they're kind. I don't think people wake up in the morning and go, actually, I'm really a horrible person. I think we're all we all believe that we're kind. Um, and conscious conscious leading has has to do with kindness and happiness. And a lot of people kind of they they it's it's an under they're underused words they're kind of pushed aside now um but I think it's really important in business I think it's important in business for us to be kind to one another and I think it's really important in business to be happy in our own businesses but also for our team to be happy and the conscious side of that has to do for me has to do with people and the planet so when I work with people and I I work with people on a one-to-one basis and I also work with people in a membership um and when I work with people, I get them to think about how the, their actions or their decisions or their plans, how it will affect the people around them. So how it will affect their clients, how it will affect the team members. Um, and, you know, if you're going to make a decision on your next stage of growth or something else that you put out there, what what implications does that have for the people around you? Um and how you, can you make that an easier process as possible for everyone? Because if you are happy in your job, who was it that said, find a job that makes you happy and you'll never have to work another day in your life? Yeah, I've heard that before, yeah. 
um I can't think who it was I'm gonna say Richard Branson but I don't know if it, it could be wrong let us know if we're wrong let us know if we're wrong yeah yeah um so and 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 it's true it really is true if you get someone who is um great for you and then you look after them within your business they will work smarter i'm not going to say harder because i don't think that they should be working harder they will work smarter for you um and that's one of the great things about being having our own businesses is that we are able to make that that those decisions for ourselves we can decide whether the people in our business um we just want them to come in and do their job and make us money and we're not that bothered by them or whether we want them to be happy it doesn't take a whole lot of time it doesn't take a whole lot of time to say, you know what, you did a really good job there. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to not put people under pressure or to give a little bit of slack where needed. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time to get to know your team well in order for you to put in place what might make their lives and their working life more pleasant for them. And the more you can do that, one the better our overall mental health within the whole world will be, yeah? Yeah, um, yeah. But also mm -hmm. the, the more likely they are to be able to um, work well with you and yeah. grow your business because they love working for you. We, um, when we had the bridal shop, we, so um, Katie was the shop owner, I managed the team, and then under me we had um, a full-time um, bridal consultant and then a couple of... Um, Saturday girls and we was like it was so important to us that our team was happy and thriving because when brides walked into our shop with their families like we wanted them to feel like this happy yeah you know, like this is you know I bet you made more sales because yeah, of it as well yeah, we, did. we we really were up on like you know making sure like team morale was up we we'd well, we did whatever we needed to do and we were like a family. And I, you know, I really miss it. That That is one thing I miss about um, the bridal shop is the little family that, that we created. And it's like we were teaching these younger girls that this, this is the way, you know, the, yeah. your life should be like. There's no need for like unnecessary pressure, horribleness in the workplace. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, we had a really positive Exactly. Yeah. And it sounds like you created a really good culture. Yes. The the people people don't realize that actually you as a leader have the freedom to create that culture. You are able to decide what that culture looks like. And anyone who is stepping outside of that or working against the, the what you want as your culture can be pulled up by you and say, you know what, that's not the way we do things here. We do them like this. So if you want a kind team, you can get a kind team because it's your business. You can make those decisions. That's it. We don't need to um, be this like hard faced business. business. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not, it's, that's not the way to go. Like, it really isn't. I, mean, I don't know. I always think those people must just be so stressed all the time. Well, it's, it's funny you should say that because I, when I went to buy my wedding dress, I went into this one shop um, and I walked in and the woman gave me the impression um she looked at me as if to say i am i own the shop uh, and, I, and i was kind of like oh, already you know what i could have found my perfect wedding dress in there and i wouldn't have bought it because it, uh, well I, I mean obviously didn't buy from her but uh, I, the yeah. feeling that she made that she gave me if if it had been much warmer and more down to earth then you know I immediately thought, oh, you know what? Can you imagine working in somewhere like this? It's it's just not a very nice environment. And we can create those environments. We can make sure, even if it is online. Yes, so, you yes. know, you said about missing your missing that idea, that feeling of your team. You can get that in an, in an online space. There's so many things that you can use now. I use with my team, I use um, Slack and we have conversations back and forth. We know, this is one of the big things that I teach, boundaries of when people are available and when they're not and when they might turn off their notifications and that's all fine but when we are when we kind of like I get these fantastic messages from my team right I get things like I've just come up with this or I've just noticed that or I saw this somewhere what about we try this and they're constantly giving me ideas as well as doing what doing the roles that they do 
And it makes for such a, because I know that they want me to succeed. They want our, our business to succeed and they want us to grow and they want more people to become conscious because they're with me. Um, and it is, it's a lovely feeling to have people around you, especially in the online world yeah. um, to, that, 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 are, that are your team, that have got your back, you know? This is exactly, exactly why we do what we do now. So um, when we were in the bridal shop, uh, we chatty girls, like oh, door was open to anybody, like whether you're buying a dress, whether you're a wedding business, whoever you are, come and have a cup of tea, we'll talk to you all day long. But we, we really saw that there was a gap um, and a lack in support in small businesses within um, the wedding industry. But it, it'd be interesting to see whether that was across the board for all small businesses. But obviously we were in the wedding industry, so that, that's kind of where we saw it. So we would support other um, like one man bands or any kind of wedding business that wanted our help. We were really good at social media because that, that was just our thing. So that's how we would support people. But time and time again, we would see, um, you know, like business owners feeling alone or feeling like they had no one to turn to. But we really wanted to change this like, culture of um, you have to go it alone in your wedding business. In, the, in our industry, it was almost like very, very clicky. Everyone would keep the cards very, very close to their chest. And I think we were one of the first kind of people to be like, no, there's enough weddings to go around. Like, this is what we do to forward our business. Why don't you try doing this? And I think slowly, like people begin to see and are still kind of seeing that actually, you don't have to go it alone. There is support out there, whether it's online, in person, um, and it's like changing that mindset of kindness. That you just, what's wrong with being kind and helping other people? There's, you're not going to get anywhere in life being a sour faced. I was going to say a name, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> Nobody calls Sally a sour face, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know exactly. I know exactly what you mean. It is. It's. It's very difficult, and I think I. I agree with you. I think there are. There's enough space, enough success, enough money, enough customers, enough clients in the world for everyone. You know, we all buy off each other. You know, um, it's it. it you, for, to think that there's a tiny little audience out there just for you that someone else might steal <laughs> is 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 um is limiting yourself it's it's stopping you you from growing isn't it um sharing with each other you know if someone comes to me and says i want to create a team where i'm at the top and i want them to be working like clockwork i want everything in um in place and i need to do it really cheaply and i need to you know and that and i feel hang on a sec they're not the right person for me I don't just kind of like go see you love I say well actually I probably know someone who might who, who might be able to help you I know other leadership coaches um and they might be able to help you but you're not my you're not my my ideal client you know um because there are there my ideal clients are out there they just you know it's just um getting or attracting the right kind of people which is something I did want to um make sure that we touched upon uh, um, on this podcast so um any of you who are looking to create a team who are who want to start outsourcing um when you put your messaging out or when you put your adverts out and when you put your graphics out please make sure that you're considering how diverse you are being because we are we have a natural tendency to mirror ourselves when we put out and it's the same with your ideal clients you tend to mirror yourself because you want people like you to come and work for you but actually creating a diverse team will help you to grow because it will give you different opinions from different places different <laughs> viewpoints and it's exactly different experiences different backgrounds so Make sure that your messaging isn't just a, a reflection of the person you are or the people that you already have in your team. Make sure that you've got a diverse range of abilities, backgrounds, uh, nationalities, that you've got um, uh, gender, um, sexuality. Make sure that you've got a, a diverse, oh, and neurodiverse, I'm, I'm neurodiverse, in case you, you couldn't tell. Um, so 
didn't even know. Make, <laughs> make sure, make sure that you've got a, a great range of messages, images out there so that you are attracting your next team member to not be a carbon copy of some of the others that you've already got or, or of yourself. That's so true um, because you can only get so far with like mirror images of yourself. Like you say, having those um, views from people from all walks of life is invaluable. Like it is, like it is one of the most important things actually. I think when you are looking for a team, is that don't just go for the obvious. Almost um, give everyone <laughs> that open chance. Okay, so last kind of words thoughts anything else that you kind of want to get across to the people listening before before we end yeah no just that um you know i'm i'm happy to get my to get my messages out and i hope that um some of what i've said has resonated enough with people to start thinking more consciously about how they um grow their team how they grow their business and how they treat the people that they or might already work with um and if you want to make sure that you are um creating more bandwidth for yourself consider is it time now and most people make this decision quite late they're already overwhelmed before they um before they uh, make this decision but are you at a point where you are about to grow and is there the scope for you to outsource some of the things that you've that you do in order to expand, to grow. We need businesses, we need small businesses to grow in the in in the culture that we've got um, and also in you know in our for our economy. We need we need you to grow. So um yeah so have a think is it something that you can do is it something that you need right now and if you need any more help please you know um come and find me and ask me um any any questions you might have um about that i'm on all the social media channels the normal ones uh, normal ones i don't know what abnormal ones there are out there um called, <laughs> there's so many now um so i'm everywhere forward slash zoe brin b-r-i-n-n what i'll do um, is pop them in the show notes so you'll be able to get a hold of zoe um click the links in the show notes um tell me a little bit about um is it the conscious leadership club, club. Yes, <laughs> yes. i was like please say it right Roxy. Yeah. <laughs> so um the conscious leaders club is um is a membership where we have a community of leaders um and they are supported by myself and some other specialists um, through training, through um, uh, training for themselves as leaders. So in leadership skills, for example, delegation, uh, that kind of thing, but also um, have training for team members. So, for example, if you use Trello, there's there's a there's a Trello training there that you can pass I on. Use to Trello. Your love Trello. Really? <laughs> um there's a training in there that you can pass on to your uh team members in yeah. order to, to so that you can give them that support and that training without having to sit down with them for hours so um the conscious leadership club or the conscious leaders club so you got me going getting it wrong now <laughs> um is a space where we connect with other leaders that we have um training resources we've also got um templates in there for um application forms for contracts so things that you can just kind of pick up because when you're a leader sometimes you just need to be able to access some stuff in order to be able to onboard for <laughs> yeah, example yeah, yeah. um That's and within so that good. yeah <laughs> within that um what i also do um a monthly on call session where i make myself available all day oh. um, quite outside kind of working hours as well so I'm from early to eve to late and um all my members are able to get hold of me all day either book a call in with me or um problem solve something a lot of them write down little um notes throughout the month and then throw everything at me all at once which, oh, is, I fine, <laughs> which is which is fine I love uh, that's kind of it's the kind of environment I thrive on so that's yeah. it's good for me um and and yeah, so we help to solve um, problems as they're coming up 
Um, and yeah, so it's it's a um, we've got a Facebook space. It's not one of these spaces that um, uh, it, it, we've. We have we have um, information and training that goes on in there, but it also gets uploaded to the platform where most people access and they come in for that kind of conversation to catch up almost in, in the Facebook group. Um, and we also have a Telegram channel for those people who don't like to spend too much time on social media, but still want to know what's coming up and what's going on, whether they can dip in and say, oh, actually, I need that bit. Um, I'm going to go in and have a look at that. So, yeah, so it's... um. The membership. I'm opening the doors uh, this evening. I suppose I better tell you the date, didn't I? Because of the podcast. So the 17th of uh, November, I'm op- reopening the doors, and um, you can come in and uh, and and have a chat with me about how that works, how it looks, and um, and yeah, um, that's 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 the, well, that's the club. There, guys, if that interests you, definitely. Um, and if you are interested in kind of outsourcing any of your bits and bobs and you think, OK, one of the things that I don't like doing is social media. You all know that me and Katie, like, this is our thing. We have a service um, called the Content Club, which is a monthly subscription service. You get um, 50 social media tiles, 50 done for you captions, five industry specific blogs, all for $12.95 a month, which is mega value i'm not even lying like the blogs are excellent like full of lots of um seasonal kind of wedding industry kind of tips tricks anything any um bride and grooms or anyone that are wedding planning these are the types of blogs that they will want to read 12.95 a month for that check the link in the show notes to check that out as well zoe it's been great to have you on today it's been lovely to be here if anyone wants to find out any more information, I will pop all of Zoe's bits and bobs in the show notes as well, included her, including her Conscious Leader Club. Did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> tripping over your tripping over your words, today, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's because of this weather. I don't know anyone else. It makes me feel ugh, it's terrible. <laughs> right, that's it for today, everyone. Um, we shall see you on the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye.